Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to solve some basic trigonometric equations. Uh, you may already know how to do that with a unit circle, but what happens when the ratio that you encounter in the equation uh, isn't one that you're familiar with on the unit circle? For example, you could solve sine theta equals root 3 over 2, but could you solve sine theta is equal to 0 0.6? Um, and the answer is yes, you can, but you wouldn't use the unit circle. Instead, you would use cast rule. So let's take a look at uh, some of these examples. So in our first example, you're asked to determine the value of theta uh, in degrees to the nearest degree on the domain 0 to 360 degrees. And the equation is simply sine theta is equal to 0 0.819. Okay, so we'll start with the uh, coordinate plane, and we're going to apply cast rule right away. So I've written letters here for each quadrant demonstrating or reminding us uh, in which quadrants those ratios are positive. Okay, now we're looking here where sine is equal to a positive 0.819. I don't care too much about the 0.819. When I first start, I just care about the fact that it's positive. And when I look at cast rule, I'm thinking in quadrants 1 and 2 is where I will find uh, sine ratios to be positive. Okay, so then the next thing that I do is I will construct two terminal arms in those very quadrants where sine is going to be positive. Okay, and then I'll have some kind of a reference angle in those two quadrants. And those two reference angles, by the way, will be the same. Because remember, sine theta is defined as y over r. Okay, and so in these two quadrants, I expect the y over r here and the y over r here to be 0.819. Okay, the next thing that I'm going to do is I will actually determine what that reference angle is. And it's as simple as taking the inverse sine of your ratio. So the inverse sine of 0.819 is 55 degrees. I'll put that into my diagram, and I'm pretty much done, right? Because I have my two answers now. The first answer is 55 degrees. So if I go sine 55, I'll get 0.819. And the other answer is this angle right here, which I would determine by uh, subtracting the reference angle 55 degrees from 180 degrees to get 125 degrees. Okay, and that's it. And you can certainly take out your calculator and verify that by typing in sine 55 and sine 125, and you should get an answer that rounds to 0.819. Okay, let's take a look at our second example. So every time I show you an example, there's going to be some little twist to it. Can you see the twist in this one? Okay, so we're still operating in degrees, but it's 10 this time. And not only is it 10, but it's 10 is equal to a negative ratio. Okay, so I'll start with my coordinate plane and uh, remind myself of cast rule. Now, 10 is negative in, not here, because all of them are positive here, but for sure here, right? In quadrant 2, sine is the only one that's positive. So 10 must be negative there, so I'll construct a terminal arm here. And 10 is also negative uh, in quadrant 4. Okay, so I'll have a terminal arm in quadrant 2 and a terminal arm in quadrant 4, like so, with the corresponding reference angles. And now I'm going to determine my reference angle, just like I did in part A. I'll take the inverse 10 of negative 3.271, and I'll get negative 73 degrees. Okay, uh, but wait a minute. Uh, how can that be my reference angle? Right? Reference angles are not negative. Reference angles are always acute angles. So um, I'm going to get around this by doing this. The, the issue really is the fact that I've taken the inverse tan of a negative ratio. Right? And so as soon as I do that, the calculator might go into other quadrants. If I insist on a reference angle, then I'm going to have to uh, make sure that I get an acute angle, a positive acute angle. So what I'll do instead is I'll take the inverse tan of the absolute value of the ratio. So instead of inverse 10 of negative 3.271, I'll take the inverse 10 of positive 3.271, and I'll get my 73 degrees. Now some of you might say, why even go through the trouble? You got negative 73 degrees before, just drop the negative, and away you go. There's your reference angle. Well, it's not always going to work out like that. Sometimes you get uh, angles that uh, maybe aren't negative, but they're definitely not reference angles because they're over 90 degrees. Right? If you follow this method, you will always assure yourself that you will get a reference angle. So if you see the trig ratio of a negative, or if the ratio itself is negative, just take the inverse sine cos or tan of the, the absolute value of that ratio. Okay. So moving along, I end up with 73 degrees. I'll pop them in there, and then basically my answer is just a quick couple of steps away. My first answer is going to be this angle right here, which will be 180 minus 73. Right. So 180 minus 73 is 107. My second angle is going to be this one, which is almost a full circle. Really, it's 73 degrees shy of a full circle, so 360 
back off or minus 73 gives me 287 degrees. And let's do one final uh, example. Now this one here, as I've promised, every example comes with uh, something unique. This one, first of all, is unique in the fact that it's now in radians. And not only is it in radians, it's not even on the equivalent interval of 0 to 360 degrees. It's uh, equivalent to negative 180 to 180 degrees, okay? Or in radians, negative pi to pi. So we're looking for all answers that satisfy this equation um, uh, on this interval, right? And speaking of this equation, this equation isn't even a written in terms of a primary trig ratio. It's written in terms of a reciprocal trig ratio. So that's the first thing I'm going to take care of, right? I don't have a secant button on my calculator. So, oh, speaking of which, I'm going to put my calculator in radian mode in this case. Um, since, since I don't have a secant button, what I'm going to do first is I will flip or reciprocate both sides of the equation to come up with an equivalent equation that I can solve. So the reciprocal of secant theta is cos theta, and the reciprocal of negative 1.084, simply put, is 1 divided by negative. 1.084, right? And I get negative 0.922. So now what I'm going to do is solve this equation. Where is cos theta equal to negative 0.922? Okay, so again, um, I will go to my cast rule, and I recognize from cast rule that it's in quadrants 2 and 3 where cosine is going to be negative. Okay, now I've drawn the terminal arms in such a way so that it's fairly reflective of what the ref uh, reference angle is going to be you're not necessarily going to know that, right? You don't know that it's going to be some small angle around 20 degrees or whatever it is. So, but it doesn't matter, right? It's it's just representative. You just can draw any terminal arm in quadrant two and three and solve for the reference angle and put it in there. It doesn't have to be drawn to scale. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is figure out the reference angle by taking the inverse cos of, now remember I did this in the last example, the inverse cos of the absolute value of the cosine ratio and I end up with 0 0.4. Remember, I'm in radian mode. This isn't degree mode. So my reference angle here is going to be 0 0.4 in both quadrants. Okay, and so now all I have to do is figure out this angle here and this angle here. Right, so the 2.75 I get by going pi, which is the equivalent of 180 degrees. So pi minus 0.4 is 2.75. Now, um, please keep in mind this 0.40 is actually rounded. When I'm actually making this calculation, I'm using the exact value of my calculator, which I think turned out to be 0 0.396 or something like that. That's why it rounds this way. Okay, and then the other answer is this one here, which would be pi plus 0.4. Okay, and so that's that's how we approach it, except, uh, and I did this on purpose because I always forget about the the interval, right? I usually go, okay, that's it, that's it, good, those are the two answers moving on. But this is a, sort of a, a unique interval. So because the upper limit of the interval is 3.14, which is, or pi, which is around 3.14, 3.54 is exceeds that. So this is not an answer that they're looking for. So instead, what we have to do is, okay, so 3.54 is no go. We actually have to go the other way. We have to rotate in the negative direction and get negative 2.75. Okay, so this would be negative pi plus 0.4 to give us negative 2.75. And those would be the two answers that we would expect on that interval. Okay, and those are three examples showing you um, how to solve a basic trig equation when you can't rely on the unit circle.